this class. All right, so I'm going to talk about exponential and logarithm equations. So we're going to talk about how to solve this two equation we talked about a little bit last time. We said solve exponential equations, we take logs on both sides. Then we solve. Then we talk about this example. So let's see this example, right? We take logs on both sides. So we put a log on both sides. This log does not matter of the base, but usually either we use base 10 or natural, we use base E. Base 10 we call regular log. Base E we call natural log. So for calculus course, most likely we use natural log, ln. So take ln on both sides, right, then one of the properties of log, we can move the exponent of the expression inside the log up front. So x plus 2. x plus 2 was exponent of 3. Now, because of the log, we, we can move this exponent in front of the log. So it becomes x plus 2 times log 3. Then we can divide it by log 3 on both sides. So we divide log 3 on both sides. We have x plus 2 equals log 7 divided by log 3. Then we subtract 2 on both sides. So x equals to log 7 divided by log 3 minus 2. Well, another way of writing this, we can write it as x equals to log base 3 and the 7, right? We can write this way. Log base 3 of 7 minus 2. So that's another property of log. Okay, log base 3 of 7. It's a log base 10, 7, or ln 7, divided by ln 3. So example 2, we do not have the term exponential, uh, the term raised by exponent. We have this scalar a. So we have a multiplied by e term. What do we do? We divide a first. So we divide a on both sides. We have e raised by 2x equals to 20 divided by 8. Then we take logs on both sides. So once we take a log, we can move this 2x up front. Then ln e equals to 1. So 2x times 1 equals 2x. The other side, 20 divided by 8, we have 2.5, ln 2.5. Then we divide by 2 on both sides, so x equals to ln 2.5 divided by 2. Okay, we don't need to approximate, right? We can just leave like this, ln 2.5 divided by 2. Let's see this example. This example is e raised by 3 minus 2x equals to 4. We do the same thing. We take logs on both sides. Then 3 minus 2x. As exponent of e, we move up front. So have 3 minus 2x times ln e. Again, ln e equals to 1. We need to remember this. ln e equals to 1. So 3 minus 2x times 1 is 3 minus 2x. That equals ln 4. So we subtract 3 on both sides. From negative 2x equals to ln4 minus 3. We divide by negative 2, we get x equals to half of 3 minus ln4. Right? We don't have to evaluate, we don't have to approximate. Then this one we talk about 
last time. This is a little bit difficult. Right, this is a quadratic equation, but with e raised by x term. So this is exponential form form a quadratic equation. How do we solve it? We think e raised by 2x is as e to the x raised by 2. So if it's difficult to see it, we can use substitution. We could let w equals e to the x. Then we see this one we can write as w squared minus w minus 6 equals 0. Then we can factor this. We can put it in a factor form. Then we can use the zero property. So split into w minus 3 equals 0, w plus 2 equals 0. We solve for w, get w equals 3, w equals to negative 2. Well, what's w? w equals to e to the x. So we change w back to e to the x. So one way we get e to the x equals 3. Another one gives us e to the x equals negative 2. But e to, the e to the x will never be a negative number. So this one has no solution. So e to the x equals negative 2 has no solution. So only take one solution. That's e to the x equals 3. Then we take ln on both sides. Right? We have e to the x equals 3. We take ln on both sides. Then we move this exponent of e x up front. Then x ln, ln e again equals to 1. So that means x equals to ln 3. All right. So this one is a little bit difficult. We have to know how to solve a quadratic equation. E to any power will never be negative. All right. So that's why we we reject e to the x equals the negative two equation because this equation has no solution. The next example is this 3x e to the x plus x squared e to the x equals 0. I have two terms. So what do we do? We factor out the common factor. The common factor for those two terms are e to the x and x. So we factor, factor out x, we factor out e to the x, we're left with 3 plus x. Then we use zero property again. So this one is saying x can be zero, three plus x can be zero, but e to the x will never be zero. So we can divide it by e to the x on both sides. So we have two solutions, x equals zero, x equals to negative three. All right, because e to the x will never, will never be zero, okay? Okay, so so that's from last class. Right? This class we're going to talk about logarithmic equations, how to solve log equations. So similarly to solve log equations, we want to write the log equation into exponential form. Okay, we want to write it in its exponential form. So how do we write this equation? This equation is saying we can write it as 2 raised by 5 equals to x plus 2, right? So it becomes x plus 2 equals to 2 to the 5. Then we solve from there. 2 to the 5 equals to 32. Then we subtract 2 on both sides. So x equals to 30, right? <clears throat> well, another way of solving this is to now I would, well, this is just another way of solving it, right? But the first way is okay, right? The second way is just to raise the power, raise by two. Well, let's not do that. Let's just keep this, this way of solving it. This way is good. 
So we write logarithmic equation into exponential equation, then solve from there. So let's see these steps of solving it. The first step is to isolate the log term. Remember when we solve exponential equations, we isolate the exponential term, right? So do a similar thing, we isolate the log term. Then we write the equation in exponential form, right? Solve exponential equation, we write into log form. Solve log equation, we write into exponential form. Then solve for the variable. So let's see these two examples. So a ln x is the a. So what's the base? The base is the e. So x equals e raised by a. Right? Another way of writing it. You could just leave in this form, e raised by a, because e is like a pi, it's an irrational number. That's the second one. Second one, we have log base 2 of 25 minus x equals e. So we write as 2 raised by 3 equals 25 minus x. So 25 minus x equals 2 raised by 3. 2 raised by 3 equals 8. So we move negative x to this side, move a to the other side. We have 25 minus 8, which is 17. So x equals to 17. <clears throat> we can check our answer. So we put 17 into, into x, right? 25 minus 17, we get 8. For 8, we can write as 2 raised by 3, right? So log 2 of a, log base 2 of 8, will be written as log base 2 of 2 raised by cube, right? So then by one of the log properties, we get we get this equals to 3, right? So this equals to 3. Okay, let's see this one. This one will have 4 plus 3 times log 2x equals 16. First step, we need to isolate the log term. So we would subtract 4 on both sides. So we have to get 3 log 2x, 16 minus 4 get 12. Then we divide by 3 on both sides. Divided by 3 on both sides, we have log of 2x equals to 4. Right, log, log is log base 10. So 2x equals to 10 raised by 4. 10 raised by 4 means 1 followed by 4 zeros. Right, four zeros. Then we divide by two, so we get the x equals to five thousand. We can check our answer. Right, we put the x equals to five thousand into the equation. So four plus three log two of log two times five thousand. Two times five thousand equals ten thousand. Ten thousand can be written as a ten raised by four. So log base ten, ten raised by four equals to four. Okay, so this equals to 4. Log without base is log base 10. So log, this one can be written as log 10 raised by 4. Okay. So that equals to 4. Log without base means it's a regular log. It's a base 10 by default. Let's see this one. This one will have two log terms. We have log x plus 2 plus log of x minus 1 equals 1. So without base, that means base 10. So how do we solve like this, we have two logs. We want to combine the log into one log. Addition means we, mod we can multiply. We have the same base, both the log base 10. 
add two logs, we can write as one log, multiply the value, multiply x plus two, x times one, x minus one. So we can write two log into one log. Still base 10, x plus two times x minus one equals to one. Okay. Then we can rewrite this. This means log without base, that's base 10. So 10 raised by one, 10 raised by one, still 10, equals to x plus two times x minus one. So this becomes a quadratic equation. Okay. So we foil this, uh, well, we expand this, we double distribute, we get x squared plus x minus two equals 10. We subtract 10 on both sides, get x squared plus x minus 12 equals to zero. Now we can factor this, we put in a factor form, solve quadratic equation. We get x plus 4 times x minus 3 equals to 0. Once this side equals 0, we can split into 2. x equals x plus 4 equals 0. x minus 3 equals to 0. That means x equals to negative 4 or x equals to 3. So I have two solutions. Well, now let's try to put it, put it back. Right? So put back negative 4. So if x equals negative 4, we put it back, we get negative 4 plus 2 for this first log. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Log of negative 2 is undefined. A negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Log of negative 5 is undefined. So we reject this value. All right. So x cannot be negative 4. If x is negative 4, we see we have this undefined, of course, undefined terms. So we reject this solution. When x equals 3, so the first one we have log 3 plus 2 log 5. The second one we have log 3 minus 1 log 2. This is fine. Again, we can combine those two logs into one log. So we have log 5 times 2, which is 10. Well, log base 10 and 10, right? Log without base means base 10. The value is 10, so that, you, that equals to 1. So 3, so this is the only solution for this equation. Negative 4 is not a solution for this equation. So for log, we need to go back to check. Let's see another example. So example nine, we have x equal x squared equals two times ln x plus two. Okay, we could try to see how do we solve this. This would be difficult, right? This would be difficult because if we try, we could divide it by we can divide it by 2, we got ln of x plus 2 equals to x squared divided by 2. We divide by 2, then we can we try to rewrite this. We can rewrite as ln means e, right? Base e. e raised by x squared <coughs> divided by 2 equals to x plus 2. Now we see we're in trouble, right? We have e raised by x squared. We have exponential form. Right? We have exponential form. So this log form, if we want to write into exponential form, we still have this x in the base. We have x in the exponent. We have x in the base. That is difficult to solve. So what do we do? Let's see. Let's see. We first move our terms to one side of the equation. So we we get x squared minus two times log x plus two equals to zero. <clears throat> then we think of this as a function of f. Right? Then we think of this as a function of f. Right? As a function of f, f of x or y. 
Then what do we do? We we graph it. We graph it. Put into graph. We put into graph. Then we will see. Okay, when does the graph cross x axis? Yeah, we see those two points. We see these two points. This at these two points, the function value equals zero. Y equals to zero, or this equals zero. So this is just another way of solving it. But for now, you don't have to worry about this much. But worry about those examples. In the compound interest, right, sometimes we need to use the skill. Remember the compound, the simple interest, we have this formula. A equals principal times 1 plus the rate of annual rate of interest. Or amount of T equals this is the interest compound n times in a year. This formula is for compounded continuously. That means every second, every millisecond, the interest is being calculated and add into the principal. So let's see this example. Finding the term for an investment to double. So a sum of 5,000 is invested with an interest rate 5% per year. So find the time required for the money to double. If the interest compound, let's see, semi-annually, that means semi-annually means n equals to, n equals to 2, right? So let's write n equals 2 for the second formula. <clears throat> Continuously, that means we need to use this continuous formula. So, so A of T double means 5,000 times 2, right, 10,000. Then we put it into the formula. 1 plus <clears throat> 0 0.05 divided by 2 raised by 2 years times T. Divided by 5,000. We have this, then add inside, <clears throat> we have 1.025 raised by 2t equals 2. Now let's put the ln on both sides. Now put the ln on both sides, then this 2t can be moved up front of ln. Then we divide by log ln of 1.025. So we get a ln2 divided by what we divide by 2 times ln this, 2 divided by 2 times ln this. Then we can put it into a calculator. It's about 14 years. Okay, it takes 14 years to double. If we put $5,000 into the bank, if the bank offers 5% interest rate annually, and if the bank calculate, if the bank calculates interest, you know, once per half year, then it would take 14 years to double 5,000 to 10,000, right? Now let's see what if the compound continuously. <clears throat> compound continuously will put it in this formula. So we still have 10,000, right? 5,000 times E raised by 0 0.05 times T. We take the logs on both sides. Then 0.05t moved down, LNE equals to 1. So we divide by 0.05 on both sides. So t equals to LN2 divided by 0.05. If we put into calculator, we get 13.86 years. It's also, it's a little bit less, it's less than 14 years. So if it's compounded semi-annually, it takes more than 14 years to double. If it's compound continuously, it takes less than 14 years to double. Okay, let's see this example. <clears throat> A sum of $1,000 is invested and the interest rate is 4%. So find the time to grow into 4000 If it's compounded continuously. This is important. Okay, if it's compounding continuously, we know we need to use this formula. 
So let's put it into the formula. So 1,000 E raised by 0 0.04, that's the interest rate, 4% T equals to 4,000. Divided by 1,000, we'll have E raised by 0 0.04, T equals to 4. We'll take a ln again, we'll take a ln on both sides, we have 0 0.04, T equals to ln 4. We divided 0 0.04 on both sides, so T equals to ln 4 divided by 0 0.04. You know, put into a calculator, that's about 34.66 years. Okay, it's about 34 and a half years, more than 34 and a half years, or almost 35 years to quadruple. All right, so put into one, you know, how many years we can get $4,000 back? That takes about 35 years all right, for the interest to be 4%. Basically, this also, these examples tells us, you know, saving money is important. Okay, um, I don't know where you guys are for today, so I'm going to assign you homework for this logarithmic equations. So last time, we only did a half of it, so I so homework 14, I mean 13, right? Last time I assigned it only for exponential, solving exponential equations. So today let me assign you some. Why I did not write here? Oh, I think I write uh, the previous one. You can always write, so homework 12, I right? send A to J from this 4.5, 4 uh, 4.4, and also some from 4.5. You can always uh, go back to the, the blackboard to check the homework sets. I think are those 12 to 24 with even number and 30 to 34, those even numbers. So okay, homework, homework 14, uh, homework 13. Is this, this section, 4.5 section. So solve some logarithm equations. Let's try. Let's try this conclude because you know we don't I don't have you here, otherwise we could do some class exercise. That's a 43 up to 54. 40, no, 45 to 54. And also I'm gonna leave you some compound interest rate questions. Doubling investment. Compound interest. Okay, let's do seventy A and seventy nine. Seventy A, seventy nine. All right. So this is homework thirteen. I'm going to I'm going to post um blackboard also. All right. Okay, Anna, do you have any questions? All right, if no, I guess that's it for today then. Do you want to present any homework? All right, okay. So anything, 
Okay. Um, well, all right. So, do you have uh, any question at all? All right. So, I guess that's all I have to say for today. All right. So, I'm going to stop recording.